Well, the Netflix documentary My Octopus Teacher has wowed and moved audiences all around the world. It stars Craig Foster, who spent every day for almost a year diving and visiting an octopus, an octopus with whom he developed a close bond. Take a look. It's a hard thing to explain, but sometimes you just get a feeling and you know there's something to this creature that's very unusual. There's something to learn here. What she taught me was to feel that you're part of this place, not a visitor. I seriously love this. And as a special treat, the man who was the director of photography is with us right now. Roger Horrocks is his name. Roger, welcome to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Uh, fantastic to be with you guys. Mate, can I just say, this documentary has blown up, especially here in Australia. What is it about this documentary that is captivating audiences? Well, I think I think it's like on a, it's a very simplistic story. It's a love story. Um, it's also a classic hero's journey, um, and I think I think COVID uh, played a, a part in that as well in terms of really making people more receptive uh, and open to the core messaging of the film, which is really about connecting with nature and finding oneself in nature. You know, Craig spoke a lot through this documentary about the changes that he went through as a person, you know, and you've worked with him on other projects. Could you see, could you see those changes happening, you know, within himself? No, I, I absolutely could. I mean, we started working together first. I first met Craig in 2005. Um, we made a film in the Okavango Delta about diving with crocodiles in 2009 and then two other projects. Um, so, you know, I, I've known him for a long time. And then, of course, he had this kind of hiatus from filmmaking. He was, he was very much burnt out. Um, and then when I reconnected with him and saw the work that he was doing in the kelp forest and the cold water immersion, um, there was no doubt that, you know, he was going through a deep transformation internally. And it was quite an amazing thing to, to witness. Roger, I've cried about a lot of things, but I've never bawled my eyes out more than I did for an octopus. Uh, I developed a very quick, close connection with that octopus. Uh, I certainly wasn't down there under the water. You were. Did you develop a bond and a love for it as much as we all do? Absolutely. I mean, I've done, I've had the privilege of, of working with, you know, a lot of incredible animals around the world because of my career. And, you know, I can absolutely tell you that, you know, have personality. They, are, they are different. But this octopus in particular, we've been really struggling to film um, the sequence. And then when we found her, it just was like, you know, it's absolute like rock star. So magic, yeah, and, and, and one does, one develops a very, very strong uh, attachment. Roger, how does it work? Because we know Craig was going down every day. Uh, were you spending as much time with him or were you just coming along sporadically uh, to film the footage of him going down? Yeah, I was very much, um, we had, like, we had a, a period of about two years where we were quite closely together. Um, for Blue Planet 2, but I was, of course, going off on assignments to Antarctica and, and other locations. He was staying and very much, you know, he, Craig is a compulsive documentarian. He's always documenting things. So he would be going in every day. And then, you know, we both live in Cape Town. When I was back from assignment and the conditions were good, then I would go in with him and, um, and, and we'd both be documenting, you know, the animal at the same time. We also saw scenes where, you know, this octopus was being stalked and hunted by these pyjama sharks. And as a wildlife videographer, I've obviously seen and captured fights and attacks between animals before. But having spent so much time with this octopus, was it ever tempting? And this is how I felt as a viewer. You know, was it ever tempting to try and intervene? It was It was massively tempting. Um, and... You know, obviously, it's. I have this. I, I do remember there were one or two moments where I almost wanted to stop filming. Um, but obviously, as a professional, you know, my job there is to document things. So, 
Yeah, it is. It is a difficult one, and in this one in particular, because of, of the time that we spent with her um, and knowing just how dangerous these these pajama shops were, it was very, very difficult not to intervene. But you know, as Craig says, that's. I mean, yeah. It's a line you can't really cross. Although, Roger, this is the one situation where the audience wouldn't have minded if you had interfered because we all <laughs> fell in love with that bloody octopus. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's, it was, it's, I get it. <laughs> so, Roger, because you have been on so many uh, different nature documentaries, as you said, uh, people can connect with animals and that there is that massive connection. We all connected with it, and it was only over, what, an hour and a half or so. You, as you said, have spent a lot of time down underwater with her. What was it like when you saw her life come to an end? Was it as tough for you as it was for us? Well, I think, I think you know, the, the beauty of a film is that it, it sort of concentrates. It, it takes that, that years, you know, of experience and kind of concentrates it and, and really, you know, builds that emotion. I mean, we were we were both very, you know, um, deeply upset by it. But obviously, we we had more time to prepare. You know, in a film, you've only got like just just when you just when you're starting to fall in love with her. You know, it's kind of coming to an end. So it was deeply sad. But there was also that understanding that this is, you know, a natural life cycle. And of course, her her progeny will will kind of take her forward. You know, mate, I uh, think this is probably the most random thing that anyone's going to say to you while you're doing the rounds and talking about this film, but I think Woolworths, mine in particular, is going to have a bone to pick with you because my partner and I have seafood marinara every Wednesday, and since we saw this, we've stopped. <laughs> and I tell you what, I nothing was going to get between me and my seafood marinara that we were having at home, but this really has made an impact on me. Is that a strange? Is that the strangest thing you've heard whilst talking to the media? <laughs> no, it's actually it's a common it's actually a common um, question, which is which is actually yeah. brilliant because it just shows that you know the film is fundamentally resonating with people to the point where they I am never ever going to eat octopus again. Now, but, <laughs> before I let you go, um, I have to just bring this up. You've also filmed for David Attenborough's Our Planet. You've worked on Blue Planet 2. You've done work with Disney and National Geographic. And you've even done the Apple TV screensavers. <laughs> what is it about underwater cinematography that draws you in? Uh, it's just, I mean, the, the ocean has always been an incredible passion for me. Um, I absolutely love being underwater. So... It's it for me. It's just the most natural kind of place to be in, and then to have this 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 sort of intentionality uh, and this mandate to go and document and bring the natural world home is is you know incredibly motivational for me as well. So, and I think the the thing I love about underwater more so than shooting in amongst the animals, you have to almost there's this dance that you have to do to get close to them because. I mean, that's, you know, they have to allow you to get close to them. You can't use a long lens. So, yeah, it's mm. just, I'm just incredibly fortunate that it's, it's uh, you know, I've ended up in this, in this career. You know, the film is made with collaboration with Sea Change Project, which you're a big supporter of. Can you tell us a little bit about what that, organize, what, what that organization is aiming to do? Well, it's fundamentally about trying to connect people, you know, with nature and specifically in the Cape, we have this, you know, phenomenal kelp forest, which people really know nothing about. So the overarching ambition is to get UNESCO World Heritage um, sort of certification for that whole kind of area, um, which will then, you know, make it a lot easier for us to protect certain areas and species and things like that. But you know, there's a, there's a scientific element to it. And it's really all about connecting people with the great African uh, sea forest. Well, to learn more about the Sea Change Project and what you can do to help, head to seachangeproject.com. And if you haven't seen My Octopus Teacher, make sure you check it out on Netflix. It is absolutely brilliant. Roger, thank you for joining us on the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Brilliant work. Absolute pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. It's a Ben Rob and Rob Bo, Ben Rob and Rob Bo, Shin.